Good morning, and a continued Merry Christmas to all of you. Although uh, technically the season of Christmas uh, seems like it's over because we opened our presents up a couple of days ago, the season actually begins on December 25th and goes for another 12 days, hence the name of the song, 12 Days of Christmas. So we're just getting started. So it's a great joy for us to be able to come back into the Lord's house and once more celebrate his birth and everything else that he did for us by coming to earth and being our Savior. And we welcome all the guests that are joining us here this morning for baptism. Uh, the Lord took on flesh as a child to, uh, to join humanity and save us. And he comes to us as children in the waters of baptism and saves us through those sacred waters. And that's a miracle. And so I'm glad you guys can be here to join us in witnessing this amazing miracle that God will soon be doing for Everly. Uh, quick announcements before we get started. First of all, uh, there's... Uh, uh, church at 9 a.m. next Sunday, just like we did this Sunday. So just these two Sundays at 9 o'clock service. Uh, after that, we'll go back to 8 and 1030. So next Sunday is at 9 a.m. There's no Sunday school or Bible study today or next Sunday. So Sunday school and Bible class will resume on January 10th. Uh, just so everybody knows, I'll be on vacation starting today around about 10 o'clock, I'm guessing. Uh, and then uh, you know, I'm always reachable. That's the great thing about technology. If you need anything, please let me know. Uh, next Sunday, Pastor Don Kirsch will be filling in for me. He's coming down from St. Cloud. Hopefully the weather will be good. Uh, for our elders and other leaders of the congregation, he plans on being here about 8.30 in the morning. If somebody could be here to let him in and then just kind of uh, let him get settled in, uh, that would be helpful for him. Uh, on the back table, our portals of prayer for January, February, and March are available. So if you are someone who enjoys those daily devotions, you can find those on the back table. As I said today, we're very excited to be able to witness the miracle of baptism as God adopts Everly into his family and calls her his own. Uh, and so we are so grateful that all of you can be here to join us in witnessing God's miracle. Our opening hymn today is printed out in your bulletin. It is, Of the Father's Love Begotten. Uh, we will be rising on the last verse. May God bless our worship.
hopefully by now you all had an opportunity to grab a baptism handout uh, for use during this opening baptismal rite. We begin now with these words of invocation by which the Lord called all of us into his family uh, through the waters of baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Lord commanded baptism, saying to his disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have written, This promise is for you and your children, and baptism now saves you. We also learn from the word of God that we are all conceived and born sinful, and so are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Everly, receive the sign of the cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Hear how our Lord Christ has opened the kingdom of God to little children. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may now be seated. And now I turn to you, the sponsors. It is your task as sponsors to confess with the whole church the faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name this child is to be baptized. After this child has been baptized, you are at all times to remember her in your prayers, put her in mind of her baptism, and as much as in you lies, give your counsel and aid, especially if she should lose her dear mother that she be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God, and be taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, and that as she grows in years, you place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, bring her to the services of God's house, and provide for her further instruction in the Christian faith, that she come to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, and thus, abiding in her baptismal grace, hi, and in communion with the Church, she may grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ, this then you intend gladly and willingly to do, please say yes. yes. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, which his grace will enable you to fulfill what we are unable to do. In order to implore the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering of this child into the family of our Father, let us all with the family of God pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Because this child cannot answer for herself, we shall all, together with sponsors and parents, faithfully speak on her behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sin and the birth of, life of, of the life of faith which God our Father bestows in and through baptism. Do you renounce the devil in all his works and all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his Do 
Who brings this child to be baptized? How is this child to be named? Everly Ann Hermes. Come here, cutie. Hi. Ready? Everly Ann Hermes, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven all your sin, strengthen with his grace to life everlasting. Peace be with you. Receive this white garment to dab your head a little bit here first so it doesn't drip in your face, but also to remind you that Christ has taken away and borne your sin and put upon you his perfect righteousness. So shall you in faith ever stand before him. Receive also this burning light. We'll let DJ hold that for you. Live always by the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Everly the new birth in holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly beseech you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to all your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon the mother of this child and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you've given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptisms so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, through baptism, God has added Everly to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, to work with us in his kingdom. And you, Everly, the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and even forevermore. Are you ready to go back to mommy? Whee! You guys can be seated. Our service continues now with the opening sentences that are taken from Psalm 111. Please rise and let us speak these words responsively. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God's only begotten Son was born of a woman under the law to redeem those who were under the law 
As the children of Adam and Eve, we also are born under the law and have failed to keep it. We confess that we have not kept the commandments of the Lord. We have sinned against our God with our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. According to his righteous law, we know that we deserve his condemnation and eternal punishment. Yet for the sake of his Son, he has promised to forgive our sins and receive us into his gracious mercies as a father welcomes his beloved children. Grant this to us, O Lord, as you have promised us to do. Let it be to you as you believe. Because you have been adopted by God, you are no longer slaves to sin. Instead, you are beloved children of God and have inherited all his promised blessings. Therefore, by the authority and command of Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading appointed for today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, and continuing into chapter 62. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Today's epistle reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, chapter 4, and this will serve as the basis for today's message. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise now out of reverence for the gospel. The gospel reading appointed for today comes from the second chapter of Luke. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Jesus' parents brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he, Simeon, took Jesus up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your soul also, so that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed." And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel on, on the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. 
And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Christ. Amen. Please be seated now. We continue with our sermon hymn, A Great and Mighty Wonder. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned earlier on in the service, even though the decorations have been up since September, technically the season of Christmas didn't officially start until just two days ago. For whatever reason, Advent and Epiphany both usually have four Sundays, but Christmas only has two. Well, that's kind of too bad. But on the plus side, it means that at the very least, we still have a few more days to celebrate this blessed season. But for many, a new season has already begun. It's the season of returning gifts. According to surveys, at least 10% of all Christmas gifts will be returned between now and New Year's Day. 
And although I can't imagine it happens a whole lot in Minnesota, there are people who will get up extra early on December 26th and they will camp out in the entryway to stores waiting for them to open up so they can be the first in the customer service line to return those gifts and then get store credit so they can buy the things that they really wanted in the first place. And what is it that people want for Christmas? Well, again, according to a survey, if people had to pick just one thing they wanted at Christmas, about 10% of Americans would choose a new car or some accessories that go with a new car. Another 6% would choose to either get a TV or win the lottery, which I thought is strange because if you win the lottery, you could buy all the other stuff on this list. But for some reason, they only 6% chose win the lottery. 5% said they wanted a new computer, a new phone, or some other kind of electronic gadget. And about that same percentage of Americans said they would get some new clothes. Again, if you won the lottery, you could buy all that stuff. But anyway, strangely, much farther down the list, below things like vitamins, jewelry, plane tickets, and home appliances, came this wish, spending time with family. Now, I would like to believe that the reason that that's so far down the list is because People already had that, so they didn't have to wish for it. Uh, so there was no reason for them to want something they already had. At least I hope that's the case. But I know that that's not the case for everyone, at least not this year. For those of you who don't know, it's, it was about six weeks between times that I was allowed into Scandy Haven to see those folks there and bring them communion. And I've never been able to see the people at Meadow Lane ever since this lockdown started. And as you know as well as I do, those people who are living in those specific locked down places, they would love nothing more than to spend time with family. Some are able to keep touch uh, via their phones. A few can see their family through the windows of their rooms to the outside, and the other people are on the outside in the cold waving back. Uh, but for the most part, people living in that kind of environment have been cut off from all of their normal family gatherings. Unfortunately, we know they're not the only ones. Uh, many of us have been forced in one way or another to separate ourselves from those we love. And just like those folks in Scandy Haven and Meadow Lane, we hate it because being with family is an important thing to us. Being near our loved ones is precious to us. And maybe the reason why it's so important to us is because we know that no matter what else happens in our lives, family are the ones we can count on to keep on loving us unconditionally, no matter how, we, how much we mess up. The only thing that could be better than being part of a healthy, loving, earthly family is, of course, being part of God's eternal, heavenly family. And in today's epistle reading, Paul says that that's possible because of Christmas. That's what Christ has done for us by coming into the world. God sent his son down to us at Christmas so that through him we could all be adopted into God's holy and beloved family. Paul wrote, as you heard earlier, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. That particular verse is interesting to me for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm amazed that as much as Paul wrote, he wrote most of what we have known as the New Testament, and as much as we celebrate Christmas as a major, major holiday, Christmas just wasn't that big of a deal for Paul, or for the early church for that matter. This one verse from Galatians is, to the best of my knowledge, the only time Paul ever addressed the birth of Christ. You'd have think that something as momentous as that would uh, warrant more writings, but apparently this is all Paul wrote. On the other hand, we know that Christ's greatest work and his greatest miracle took place on a cross, not in a manger. Uh, so maybe it makes sense, after all, that Paul's focus might be elsewhere. And that also might explain why the early Christian church for over 300 years uh, did not really celebrate our Lord's birth. I'll talk about that, uh, how it all came about at our next Bible study, but for now let's get back to Paul. There's one other thing that I find interesting about this verse, and it's that in this brief description of Jesus' birth, Paul manages to sum up God's whole goal for us, which was that we would become his adoptive sons. 
Now, hopefully you know that Paul's not being a sexist or a chauvinist because he's calling us sons rather than children. In those days, there's a very good reason why he used the word sons. It's because sons were the only ones who were guaranteed to receive their father's inheritance. So that's one reason why Paul would refer to us as sons, to emphasize the confidence and the certainty we have that we will receive all the things God has promised to give us. But you know, there's another reason that he refers to us as sons, and it's to show the closeness and the depth of the kind of relationship that God wants to have with us. By calling us sons, Paul is literally comparing us to none other, none other than Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son. In other words, it's saying that God wants us to be to God the Father like Christ and have the same kind of relationship with him that his only begotten Son does. I don't know if you've ever thought about it like that before. I, I know that I haven't necessarily always thought about that. Have you considered how God did everything so that he could know us and love us and connect to us in the same deep, intimate, loving way that he does with his own son? That's what the Apostle John was talking about in his first epistle when he wrote, We are God's children, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that we shall be like him, referring to Jesus, because we shall see him as he is. To be like Jesus means being a fellow child of God, perfect, holy, and blameless. And God didn't want us to be slaves. He wanted us to be his children. That was his goal for us. And that's why, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son. That's why the Son of God chose to be born of a woman and born under the law so that he could fully satisfy the requirements of the law. When Adam and Eve first sinned, their sin infected us all. They not only corrupted God's perfect creation, they also passed down their sinful natures to us and doomed all of humanity to death because that's the punishment for sin that the law requires. That's the reason why all of us, unless our Lord returns first, will someday die. But there's a second death talked about in Scripture, an eternal one. This second death is separation from God in a place of darkness and torment known as hell. And because of our sins, we not only die that first death, which is physical, we also to de deserve to die that second one. But thanks be to God that we don't have to experience that second death because when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son to be born of a woman. Of course, there was more that needed to be done than simply sending forth a son to fulfill the Father's plan for salvation. He had to do more than just be born to truly and fully redeem us. He had to be born under the law and then fulfill it perfectly and completely. He couldn't just come riding down from heaven on some magnificent white horse and by the sheer force of his divine power and glory fix everything that Adam and Eve broke. No. In order for the law to be completely and eternally fulfilled, Jesus had to do it as a man, not as God. That was the only way that the law could be fully and legally satisfied. After all, the law was not given to animals, nor was it broken by them. Therefore, their death could never satisfy the law. The animal sacrifices of the Old Testament were only temporary substitutions, which God allowed to be offered until the one true and eternal sacrifice could be made. But in order to pay in full the price for humanity's sins, which was death, a human being had to die. But not just any human being. That human being had to be perfect without the blemish of any kind of sin. Only that would enable the sacrifice to be acceptable and the penalty could be fully paid. That's why Jesus Christ was born of woman and born under the law, so that by his innocent death, he could pay the price to the law that we owed. And by rising again, he redeemed us and he cleansed us of all of our sins. Everything that could ever keep us apart from God was eliminated. And anything that could stop us from being like Christ was defeated and destroyed. 
For that reason, we are no longer slaves. We are sons and inheritors of all that God wanted us to have from even before the creation of the world. As the saying goes, that is the reason for the season. That's why Jesus came into the world just like the rest of us, as a tiny little infant with all of our weaknesses and frailties and fears. Although he was God, by being born of a woman, he was also man and as vulnerable as any other newborn. You know that story about how he needed to be protected from Herod because Herod was trying to kill him. He needed that protection because as strange as it seems, and as hard to believe as it seems, God chose to become mortal by taking on human flesh. He could suffer and be killed. And we know that someday that's exactly what he was going to happen to him. In fact, that's the reason he came to the earth in the first place, so that he could die our death and then raise us up to new life again. But in order to give that gift to us, first he had to live under the law for the next 33 years and obey it perfectly. It started out eight days after his birth, as we heard about in today's gospel reading, when he was brought to the temple and circumcised and purified. He did that because that's what the law required. Thirty years later, that's why he showed up at the Jordan River and, and asked John the Baptist to baptize him. Not because he needed it for his the forgiveness of his sins at all. Jesus said that it needed to be done, quote, to fulfill all righteousness. And Christ has fulfilled all righteousness. He has fulfilled the Father's plan for our salvation. And now by his baptism, his righteousness becomes our own. In the beginning, God created us to be his children so that he could love us and cherish us and bless us forever. But when our first parents sinned, they gave up our birthright and exchanged it for a life of slavery to sin. But God promised that he would do what we could not and that is to destroy our death and set us free from our sins. He would do what the law required so that we could once more be his beloved children and live with him forever. And my dear friends in Christ, through our Lord Jesus Christ, he has done it. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue now with the confession of faith. Please rise. Our confession of faith for today is taken from the small catechism. This is the second article of the creed focusing on the Son of God and its explanation. We speak the, the second article together. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death in order that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, even as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. We now continue with the prayers of the church, and in our prayers, uh, we also want to include the family and friends of Harlan Paulsrud, who I just found out this morning has passed away. Let's go to the Lord now in prayer. Lord God Almighty, we are so grateful to you that in the fullness of time you kept your promise and sent us a Savior. As we continually rejoice in that fact that through him you are God with us, we pray that you would grant us your Holy Spirit, that by his power and encouragement our lives would reflect the joy that we have in our hearts today. 
Heavenly Father, because you always keep your promises, we trust in your promise to hear us when we cry out to you in our times of need and to answer us according to your great mercy. Therefore, we come to you now, asking you to help and heal all those afflicted with troubles of any kind, especially Beth, Elizabeth, Ruth, Belwyn, Amy, Michelle, Stephen, Trevor, Rebecca, Melody, Rosemary, Madeline, Heather, Giselle, Linda, Jim, Peggy, Lydia, Roger, Ken, Paul, Mark, Sarah, Kellen, Orlin, Darlene, Donna, and all those that we lift up to you now silently in our hearts. Thank you for hearing us, good Father. Grant to us the desires of our heart according to your gracious will. Lord God and good shepherd of your sheep, we thank you that you love and care for us during our earthly lives, and then at a time known only to you, you gather us up into your arms and carry us home. May the family and friends of Jean and, and Harlan be comforted by your word of promise, by which you grant new and everlasting life to all who believe. May the resurrection of Jesus Christ give hope to all who mourn and enable them to look forward to a blessed reunion to come. Holy Spirit, we thank you for all the gifts that you bestowed on Everly today and to all of us on the day of our own baptisms. Today we especially rejoice with those who celebrate their baptismal birthdays this week, including Chad, Caitlin, Carolyn, Thea, Angela, Sarah, Stephen, Cameron, Amanda, and Dawn. May the remembrance of their special days bring them everlasting comfort and confidence. O oh Lord, when we look around at our world, we see that there are many who are hurting, hungry, and homeless. Have mercy on them, as well as those who are feeling lonely or hopeless, and be their source of comfort and joy. Use us as your instruments for good in this world, so that the physical and spiritual needs of our neighbors would be satisfied by you through us. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Hear us now as we sing the prayer your Son has taught us. God has come and made his dwelling among us. As his adopted children, let us go forth in joy, knowing that he has put his name on us and covered us with his righteousness. Go in peace. The Lord is with you. And he will be with you and bless you always until the very end of the age. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated now for the singing of our closing hymn. 